Welcome to What the Wrestling, a show where I take a look at the world of professional wrestling, talk about professional wrestling, between the three major U.S. companies. I just give my little thoughts about stuff. Sometimes I talk about how weird it is, but sometimes it's, you know, something else. I think we're going to start with WWE. There isn't a whole lot going on there last month. As they were all building up for the pay-per-view Clash at the Castle. Which, as of this recording, has happened recently. So that'll be on next month's episode, not this one. But there's a lot, it was a bit of build-up for that. And the world was wondering just how different WWE was going to be with Triple H having uh, taken over for Vince McMahon. And... It isn't a lot of major changes yet, but it is noticeable. Every the forbidden words are back. There's like a lot of things that they used to not be able to say, like wrestler or hospital, uh, or belt when, when referring to championships. There's a whole big list of stuff that Vince didn't let wrestlers say, but uh. Between that and some of the little guys are starting to get more attention and pushes to build up and to become new stars. Uh, I have a lot of hopes for Triple H having uh, cranking out a brand new good product now. Uh, with time. We're just going to have more time to see who it is. Uh, speaking of new star, uh, young stars uh, getting a chance, they rehired... Carrion Cross and his wife Scarlet. Oh, I'm sorry. That's off stage knowledge. You're not supposed to know that they're married. But still. Carrion Cross and Scarlet are back. Immediately showing up one SmackDown in order to present an hourglass to the tribal chief Roman Reigns, indicating that his time was running out. It was Carrion Cross's thing. Hourglasses. I, I dig it. I have one little thing. I wanted to make sure I said something about Impact this episode. But I really just have one one thing. And that is, Violent by Design's promos are weird. They used to be very irritating uh, in their weirdness. With repeating themselves constantly as if it was a special effect. Some kind of echo in wherever the place they are. But they were doing it manually. And it got more annoying than anything. So now they just perform promos where they're standing on certain levels of a staircase and talking in the staircase. Nice, big, echoey room. And they, I don't know, it's, it's weird. And the only thing I really had to talk about for Impact this time... So, now we're moving on to AEW, and there's some, there's been some issues with Maxwell Jacob Friedman, M MJF, who went on a rant a few months ago and has not yet to be seen since, with no word of what's going on there, whether he's fired or suspended or just not coming into work. We don't know. They're not telling us anything. But the but CM Punk uh, got into a bunch of heat with dub, uh, with AEW and wound up losing his title reunification match against John Moxley in about three minutes. So whatever he did. It ticked AEW off a lot. But speaking of AEW, particularly Chris Jericho, the man has a million nicknames. The man has a million nicknames. It's like every other week he comes up with one. At AEW alone, he was La Champion. He was the Demo God. All right. He called back his old Lionheart gimmick from when he first started. 
He was the pain maker if you have anything involving Japanese jet death matches. And most recently he was the wizard who throws fireballs because he's a wizard. Like how Chris, how many times do you have to come up with a nickname? I've lost count of how many you actually have throughout your entire career. Uh, it's been a lot, Y2J. And lastly, I had to mention this last. It's so dumb. But, uh, lastly, there had been a feud going on between the Acclaim, the local raps, uh, amateur rap stars of uh, AEW, and the Gun Club, a group consisting of Billy Gunn and his two sons, Colton and Austin. Well, well, after they've completed their feud for the most part with a claim on top, Colton and Austin decided to turn on their father in a, about a week later, and it came to the acclaim, it led to the acclaim coming down to actually rescue Billy from his own sons. And as he was sitting there, recovering, slowly trying to get back to his feet, they claim what to say, well, Max Caster specifically, was there to say, Scissor me, daddy ass! I probably should have explained for people who didn't know that near the end of his career, Billy Gunn became known as Mr. Ass. Because eventually he was... Originally, he was the one Billy Gunn, then Badass Billy Gunn, and then Mr. Ass. And so, because he was Mr. Ass, the Gun Club was referred to with by the acclaim as, uh, as the Ass Boys. Which, of course, would make Billy Daddy Ass. So, scissor me, Daddy Ass. And they, they did a little, little finger scissor symbol, and they meshed it with another person doing the scissors and then wiggled and yeah, it's a, yeah okay fine it's slightly sexual I suppose but it was mostly just stupid fun and I cannot get past this the line scissor me daddy ass which they use they claim used two two nights two weeks in a row two different shows where they said the line not once but twice so they definitely were wanting to make this stick. And I don't know. The world of professional wrestling is wild. And uh, I'll tell you more about it next month. And I've gathered more things to talk about. But until then, I'll see you in the ring.